I am waiting for the time where we can speak about things that are historically black without apology, without qualification, where they can just be considered as part of the whole. HBCUs gives us the opportunity to say that being black is okay, doing what you want to do is okay, being great is okay. One is often reminded that there are generations that came before and that because there are generations that have come before, you can study, you can learn, you can push beyond what the world expects of you. Whether you went to Howard or Texas Southern, Hampton, whatever school you went to, we're gonna look out for each other. We were walking into a family setting, like, so we take care of each other. That means if I only got two swipes on my, uh, on my cafeteria let me card, get it, let me get it. you gonna get my other swipe. HBCUs to me really embody the legacy of excellence, of intelligence, of community building, and of um, advocacy for ourselves and for our people that it just doesn't exist at other colleges. The very first HBCU was Cheney University in Pennsylvania. Then um, Lincoln University was the second one. They were the first degree granting institution. I know Shaw University was the very first HBCU in the South. What I have experienced through HBCUs is that failure is not an option. Professors expect excellence out of the students and that really shows up in the way that they work with the young people in the classroom, the way they work with the young people outside of the classroom, um, the expectations that are conveyed uh, in orientation. I've heard a ton of stories about people who had 2.0 and like 880 test scores and say that they went to schools like Lincoln and Morgan and they say that those schools gave them a chance when no other school told them yes. Having the nurturing learning environment of a HBCU campus, having you know teachers that are invested in your success, um, having administrators that you can look up to in positions of leadership and in positions of authority that we may not you know always see outside of the HBCU environment, I think that's really powerful. Your teachers care about you, your teachers exactly. love you, they want the best for you. The lunch ladies want the best for you, you yes, know what do. I mean? Like this is a family sentence to take advantage of all the support that should be given because the HBCU support is different. I feel like we can go to any school because we can't just, like trying to limit ourselves to HBCUs won't help like us going around the world everywhere. Many of the young people that I interact with, I will recommend that they consider applying to an HBCU. They often hear that as I have to go to an HBCU and I say, no, this is really right now, this is about having a list that is broad enough so that in the spring, when you're making a decision, you have as many options as possible. When my son was um, going through the college process, there was never a mention of any HBCUs. There's CUNYs and SUNYs, and that's fine, and, and predominantly white institutions, and that's fine as well. But I feel like we have to, if we're gonna present students with the, the entire picture, let's do the entire picture. You can't not include HBCUs. To any, um current high school students that might be watching this, even though I'm always gonna be 100% go to an HBCU, I know that HBCUs are not for everybody. And that's just the honest truth. Like, I'm not gonna bash you because you wanna go to Harvard or Princeton or NYU or something like that. Us going to more places and us being more surrounded and thing help other people understand that black people are just like just people. The black community is not a monolithic community. There are people from all over the world who attend HBCUs. There are people from all over this country who attend HBCUs. Different religions, different beliefs, different orientations. And it's an opportunity to expand your knowledge about self, your knowledge about other folks, and your knowledge about academics. Don't sleep. Like, I took my son, he just graduated from high school. He's going to an HBCU, shout out to VSU. Um, I took him on a tour of North Carolina a and and I saw a lot of white students, you know? So I think that when people try to tell you that we're, this, our schools aren't relevant or we aren't important, it's like, really though?
I, I hear a lot of different things from the young people I work with uh, who are thinking about going to college. Some of them are indifferent about HBCUs. Some of them are solidly against HBCUs, um, perhaps because of information that they've received and not fact-checked. I think it's also about setting the record straight because I think if you run into people who want to tell you what they think they know about HBCUs and what they, then you'll find out they don't know a lot. There's a lot of misconceptions. Some of the stereotypes of HBCUs that I often hear, in fact, I just heard last week, um, include not being strong academically, uh, not having the resources, infrastructure, or physical plant that provides someone with a comfortable um, higher ed environment, being a party school. Those are there's some of the stereotypes. And you know, there are racist un underpinnings to all of those, I believe. I've been told throughout my whole entire high school career that HBCUs give bad financial aid, which is not true all the time. HBCUs aren't the real world. A lot of people believe that, you know, that there's no diversity there and that, you know, that's just not a realistic way to go to school or whatever the case may be. And I just think that, I think the opposite. I think it's the best way to go to school. That was one of the biggest misconceptions, biggest misconceptions I had to face was, there's no culture, oh, it's just the, just being black, like like we're basic and we're not. Well, that everyone is the same. The one thing that HBCUs do is they allow you to be a full person when you're in college. So people are now seeing HBCUs as an option where they can like just be a student and just go to school and not be like the one kid when they're talking about slavery, they're like, hey, what you think about slavery, <laughs> you know? The young people we talk to are experiencing otherness in a palatable way that they haven't in you know the past 10 to 15 years and because of that i think that there is much more awareness about hbcus as an educational option and a lot of young black people are like i want to go to school and not get poisoned by my roommate and yes. I want to not get arrested because I'm taking a nap in the library. And so I think for a lot of people who thought HBCUs were like, you know, not a viable option, they're now seeing it as, oh, I can actually be safe. Like it's now becoming a safety issue to attend an HBCU. What troubles me is if a young person is choosing an HBCU because they want to get away from. And HBCU is, does not exist for the purpose of sequestering a young person from the challenge of being other in this community. That, that's not the role, um, it's not a fair way to think about higher education. Me personally, being around people that look like me, I feel more empowered about myself. And I feel like when I graduate, I'll know more about myself and my placement in this country, in this world as a woman of color, especially being in STEM, that I can walk out and I'm like, I know what I'm doing because of my HBCU. Accept who you are, be accepting of you. And in all your quirkiness, all your radicalness, and embrace that.